Good morning, crazy crafters. It's sunny, and I am here with a solution. I'm hoping. All right, so I have a couple of friends. One's my daughter's friend, one's my bestest friend, and they want to do a little bit of uh, album making, but they don't really have all the tools. They haven't really been exposed to it. They leave they live too far away from me for me to like be helpful and I'm not even really sure what kind of supply stores they have in their area so I was thinking how can they make mini albums without having to spend a fortune to get all the stuff but still be able to make an album and you know why buy all that stuff if you don't know it's something you're really gonna get into so this is what I've come up with and Jen and Kat, this is especially for you. I want you to have a look at it. What I've done here is I've made a very simple base album. All right, this one is in cardstock. Uh, the, I mean, it's in craft cardstock is what I meant to say. That describes this color, which is just a, a craft. It's not really a tan. It's not really a brown. It's just craft paper. Just basic art craft paper is the color, but it's a good quality cardstock. So the album measures four and a half this way by six and a half this way. Has almost a three inch spine. Okay? So you can see I'm just wrapped in simple craft cardstock. Open it up, but these are nice sturdy chipboard covers. Alright, so you open it up. It's got five base pages. And I've only used two different page designs. Now the pages are sli slightly smaller than the cover. The pages actually measure six and a quarter by four and a quarter, which means you can mat them at either six and an eighth by four and an eighth, and that'll give you a 16 inch border all the way around. Or you can go ahead and mat them at um, four by six, which gives you an eighth of an inch border all the way around. What that means is you can get four by six photos in here. Long story short, which I should have gone to in the first place. Yeah, right. Ramble away, old woman. All right. So anyway, your front page has a little flap that goes up, so you can you can do whatever you want to. You can put a magnet there and make it a closure. You can put a little strip on it and make a mini pocket. Um, you can cut it off if you don't like it. doesn't really matter. It's just an option. Every base page is a pocket page, so I've put a 4x6 mat in each one. Personally, I'd round these corners because I don't like 90 degree edges. I'd round that one too. But I put it in there so you can do whatever you want to with it. You can mat it front and back. You can just mat one side. You can throw it away. All right, on the back of the first page, and again, pages one, three, and five are the same, and two or four are the same. That's kind of standard with me. It's what I like to do. So on the back of page one, you've got it just flips open. Again, I'd probably round those quarters and put down a magnet, but that's up to you. And then the front of the second page does the same thing. What that means is you can get a really good spread. See there? I can't even get the whole thing in, in the screen. But that would allow you to do a nice coordinating paper, one big long spread if you wanted to. Again, we got another photo mat in that at the end of that page. On the back of page two, instead of having a flap up, it's got a flap down. So that's basically the only difference Page one, the flap is on the front. Page two, the flap is on the back. And I know that's page three, but remember one, three, and five are the same. All right, so this one kind of does this thing. And again, you can put a magnet. You could, you could actually split this one and do a dual flap. You could cut off the two edges and just have a narrow center flap. I've left it alone so you can do whatever you want. And you get to pick your own designer papers and all you need to finish this album is some designer papers, some adhesive, and I'm going to recommend a paper trimmer. Now you can get an X-Acto knife and a ruler on a hard mat and you can cut your papers and it's going to take you forever and you're going to lose interest. I would go to Walmart, spend the $19.95 and get a nice little Fiskars paper trimmer. Zip, 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 you can trim your papers. So again, page three is just like page one was. You've got the flap in the front. And then between three and four, you've got another one of those nice four-page spreads. 
or you know you, you can do whatever you want you could actually glue that down and make it a pocket I think it's a waste of land or uh, of real estate but you can do whatever you want you could even attach another piece and make another another fold and I can tell you how to do that or show you how to do that and I think what I'll do is probably make a video of taking one of these blank albums and decorating it to give you some ideas but anyway basically this idea was for Kathy and Jen um, I just thought it might be a good way for you to try and paper craft so again Sunny from Creative Therapy, I do thank you for watching. And if anybody else is interested in a bear album to decorate yourself, just let me know. Maybe that'll be my thing. Who knows? And, you know, we can also do these portrait. If you if you could have the spine on this side so your photos are um, vertical. I can change the dimensions. We can make, make a nice square album. The reason I started with this one is because you can decorate it with a 6x6 pad. And a 6x6 pad typically is going to run you 5 or $6. You could get an 8x8 pad. This way you don't have to buy the big um, packs of 12x12 papers, which can run up to 20 bucks, And still all, you know, have all-in-one collection. I don't know for certain that one pad would decorate this whole thing. One 6x6 might take two. I'm thinking it's probably going to take two, but I haven't gone in there and decorated one myself, so I will try and figure that out for you. Again, if anyone is interested, just let me know. See you next time, crazy crafters. Ciao.